and welcome to the Fat Squirrel Speaks. Um, today is May 14th. I know the month and the day. A star. And this is episode 11. Or maybe 12. See, dang it. Two out of three, whatever. That's not bad. I'm rolling with it. <laughs> so hello, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for joining me. Um, if you're a new viewer, thank you very much. Welcome. Greetings. Salutations. What? Um, if you're a returning viewer, I appreciate you making time for me in your busy podcast viewing schedule. I really do. Thank you ever so much. So, um, what is going on this week? I don't know. This should be this this segment should all be me just being sing soggy crazy face because obviously I can't help it. Um, what is going on? You know, but normal. Not anything terribly exciting. The zoo, the playground, Mother's Day. Oh, Mother's Day was exciting. Did you like Mother's Day? I enjoyed Mother's Day quite a lot this year. My husband, he was totally a goofball. My husband, um, you know, flowers. Yay! I love flowers. And guess what? This is so cool. Ooh, I wish I could reach them. But if I try, it'll be an epic fail, and I'll probably get water on my computer, and it'll blow up and bang. Um, but my husband totally got me flowers. But guess what? This year. Not only, okay, let me insert this. My husband is not a fancy pants. <laughs> He's a very working, hard feller. <laughs> but, you know, we don't know flowers from florists, which I'm fine with. My mother was a florist. I support florists. Go local florists and small business owners, yay. That's not happening with him. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't look that way. But anyway, so I think my flowers were from, like, some large Target Kroger, something like that. But they were totally awesome this year. My flowers not only had hydrangeas in them, they also had cabbage in them. How cool is that? Like the flowering cabbage you see, like, in decorative uh, planted beds and whatnot. It totally had those in them. I was very excited. That's so cool. So I'm like, <laughs> every time I look at them, I'm like, I kind of, I think I kind of want to bite it. <laughs> I'm sure there are so many hazardous chemicals on there. I would probably get cancer of my face instantaneously. But I still think about it every time I see them. <laughs> like, hmm, I wonder if that's edible decorative cabbage. I don't know. Somebody fill me in if you know. Anyway, so that was very nice. So then also, I had to tell you about this because I was going to tell you about this anyway. So I've told you before that I am not a hobby farmer, but instead a hobby hobby farmer, like twice removed from any sort of farming activities. I live in the city. I have, my backyard is approximately this big. I sometimes have to turn sideways if I'm having a really big butt day to get through it. It's this big. I grow green beans and strawberries in my tiny little raised beds and crab grass that's you know we're good at those and dandelions we're very i am an awesome dandelion farmer i've almost considered getting a hamster just because i know they like dandelion greens could you not you could have like a whole hamster breeding center here but anyway so i'm a hobby hobby farmer so my husband knowing my love of both sheep and farming totally bought me a series of books by this lovely lady Catherine friend it's a great name. Um, and this one is the first one. It's called Hit by a Farm. Now, sheep. I've totally gotten sheepish, which is her, I think it's her third adult book. The phone is ringing. That's exciting. Sorry, I didn't think to actually turn that off because people don't usually call us. Hmm. But um, so I actually started reading her third book, Sheepish. But I stalled out on it because, quite frankly, they have a sheep farm, but they don't wool anything. And that is just so weird to me that I can't handle it in my brain. Like, I can't make sense of it. And so, like, I kind of stalled out. Like, she just kept talking about how much she doesn't do wool. I don't get that. So I kind of... But anyway, so now I'm reading this one, which is the first one. And it's making more sense why she doesn't do wool. But it makes sense why she has sheep, that even though she doesn't do wool. Anyway, I'm enjoying this one very much. Now, I will say this about the author. 
who I'm sure is a very lovely human being and can obviously write a book, which I could never do. So yay her. But I will say this. She has that like self-deprecating, like city girl gone to the country voice, which usually I find quite charming. Like, um, who else can pull that off? Like Bill Bryson totally pulled that off on when he did his, um, his Appalachian trail book, which I instantaneously cannot remember. A walk in the woods, which is like totally one of my favorite books. Ever. I have a total, my hobby, hobby farming and my supreme love of the Appalachian Trail. I have an Appalachian Trail sticker on my car. That and my college sticker are the only stickers I allow. I don't even have a knitting bumper sticker, although I may need to change that. Okay, rambling. Um, but so he has that like self like, oh, I'm out of shape and I can't walk up this hill. Like, I get that, like, totally fine. That uh, I just was telling you the other, like a couple shows ago about I'm reading Turn Right at Machu Picchu. That guy also like, oh, I'm out of shape. I'm a, sh I'm a sh city feller. I, fine, I enjoy that voice. It's a different perspective. Makes sense, right? She's a little, she's not like prissy, like super prissy, but she's, she's like a little too much afraid of the farm <laughs> so to the point where I kind of get annoyed with her. Again, I am sure she's a lovely human being. I'm not judging her. I'm just saying it's sometimes difficult to read about how afraid she is of the farm when I'm so excited about the farm. Maybe that's part of the problem too. Like we're having this headbutting thing about, oh, the farm is so beautiful. And she's all like, oh, I don't want to touch the sheep's testicles. And I'm like, well, I mean, I'm not thinking about touching the sheep's testicles because that would probably put me in a whole different class of crazy, which re would require medication and therapy. I just knit instead. But, um, so I'm having a little trouble with that, but this one is, is helpful because this is the first one. She, she talks more about why her and her partner have a sheep farm, even though neither of them do wool. And again, I can't say that enough. It freaks me out that they have like 120 sheep or something crazy like that and don't use the wool. But it's actually really cool because again, it gives you a whole different perspective on the sheep livestock business because it's a meat business, not a wool business. And it's really cool too because she talks about like how hard it is to sell wool on the American wool market because it's been flooded. Well, this is like a book written in the 93, I'm going to say 93. I could look at the handy dandy front of the book that all librarians use. Oh, actually this says copyright 2006, but this must be a second. Or it must have taken quite a lot of time to edit because she's talking about it in the 90s. Um, so she's talking about like how hard it is to actually sell wool because the, the market was so flooded by Australian and New Zealand um, wool businesses. And I'm sure now that that's even changed more with the South American wool business. I don't know anything about the politics of that. I got to read up on it. I'm not trying to pretend like I know anything. I don't. But the whole South American wool thing kind of intrigues me. It's... Prices seem unnaturally less expensive. So that makes me worried. It's like, are they doing bad things to the sheep and the environment to make the wool so cheap? I don't know. I don't know anything about that. I need to read about that. <laughs> Here's a podcast in which I discuss things I know nothing about at all. <laughs> That's helpful for you, right? But anyway, I just wanted to mention that because it was part of my Mother's Day present. And he also got me her other two books because I have the sheepish on Kindle. He kind of is weirded out by the Kindle. He likes the paper book. I enjoy the paper book. And I will be excited to take this camping because I'm always afraid to take my Kindle camping. So I'm excited about camp reading this year. I'm going to have all about farms on camp. But so that one, sheepish. And then there's another one that's like, well, I wish I could remember the name of it. Something about like the politics of being a carnivore, which I think sounds very interesting. I am very into food politics. Crazy into it. I won't rant because this is not the food politics show. It's the knitting show. But I love it. I love to have lengthy and heated debates with my friends who are on exactly the same side as me. <laughs> that's not a debate. But whatever. I enjoy conversating about it. Hmm, I should really write a note that I need to research the South American wool thing because it crops up in my mind every once in a while. I need to do that. And then I always forget. I don't have a pen. Remembering. Okay. So Mother's Day was great. Oh, we also planned a surprise birthday party for my husband, which was very fun. Um, I was completely convinced that I have a five-year-old. She does not know what a secret is. Luckily, my husband, terribly unobservant. <laughs> All throughout the day that was supposed to be happening, there were all these clues where I was like, oh crap. Oh, the cat's on the back. You know, that whole thing where you're just like, shh, 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 shh. 
Like you can, your friend is over there and she's talking and you can see her about to say something and you're like, you're just psychically nipping her in the bud and she doesn't understand. And I don't think any of the women slipped, but you know what I mean? So there were all these, like, there were like seven things as we were all huddled in the house waiting for him to come there so we could pop up and say surprise. We were all, and then we were just like, oh, and then I remember when so-and-so said this. I was like, oh, he totally knows. And then he called to be like, is there any food there? And I was like, my husband never worries about if there's food at this house. That is not like him at all. He could live on cereal and Coke. He really could. Um, I won't get into that discussion. But anyway, so we're all like, and I'm like, oh, God, he definitely knows. And they're oh, he knows. He knows. He had no clue. It was very awesome. So we sneaked it off on him. And thanks to my friends. Oh, really, I could not have done it without them because I am not a party planner. I will cook food until the end of the world, happily. But oh, I don't like to... Oh, oh, oh. I'm very bad about like asking for favors or like being... Even remotely thinking people are interested in having fun with me like and my family. I know that's stupid because we always have fun with our friends. But I'm always like, oh, they're not going to want to do that. Why would they come over here? Why do they care? They always do and they always do. But I still am retarded in my brain. So... But it was successful, which was awesome sauce. So yeah, Mother's Day and a birthday party. I guess that was kind of an eventful week. I really didn't think about it until just now when I was recapping. There was lots of to-dos. There was jazz hands. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> the show. Um, I just wanted to give you a helpful reminder to let you know that the Gratitude Cal is running until June 3rd. So get your little projects posted, dude. There are three fabulous prizes, the lollipop yarn, the exciting project bag from the Plover Bird. And let me just discuss, I have mine here. You're, this is not the one you're getting. Yours is blues and greens, but I love mine so much. Really for like the whole two weeks now that I've had it, I've just been like, how did I live without all these project bags that people so generously gave me two of? Because I, I was living a life in the cave. I might as well have been blowing paint through my hand on the wall. It's like a Neanderthal. Um, and now that I have them, I'm like, oh, this is the space age. I love it. I don't know why knitting bags equate the space age, but let's face it. I mean, it's not technically necessary. It is like an extravagance of sorts, but it's awesome. And I love it. So you'll get a lollipop yarn is one. The beautiful bag by the Plover Bird lady. Lovely. She's a Plover Bird store. Etsy is. I'll put the thing. And then, oh, and then Hazel Knits. Jeez, that's three great prizes, people. I'm telling you, I'm still considering entering a faux my project. If you see any posts in there that only have one post, any people with no picture, you may want to call me out on it because it might be me. No, it won't be me. I would not do that. But I am tempted. <laughs> Yay, prizes! So that is running through June 3rd. I do ask that you... Um, excuse me. I do ask that you have... Some people have put pictures up, but don't have a Ravelry project page. I do ask that there be a project page and that you tag your projects with that squirrel gratitude. It needs to be a wearable of some sort or another. Just a reminder. I think that's it. So I will not scold you for not being up to date on your Ravelry projects page because I am very bad at it. I need to get better, but I am very bad at it. So, but if, if you're wintering a prize, just do it. That's part of the chore of winning a prize. The potential for winning requires that you have a Ravelry project page. If you don't want to do it for anything else, I don't care. I'm not judging you. You know, prefer to see your projects, but I won't scold you. But for this, you need to have a project page. That's all I'm saying. That's how it works, yo. So, June 3rd, I hope you're going, I hope it's going well for you. People are doing things on the boards. I love it. They're posting their pictures in progress. They're talking about um, ways they have found the gratitude cow to be a positive experience, which I'm very excited to hear. Um, people have asked for a repeat cow. I'm sure we will do that because um, it's, I think it's a cool thing to do. we got lots to be thankful for in our first world loveliness of loveliness. We should be grateful. So I think that's all. Gratitude in your heart. 
knit it into your garment, make life better. I'm going to turn down the brightness on my scammer because I totally forgot to do that until just now when I saw the screensaver change and realized that in fact it is quite bright. So hopefully that will make me look less like a ghost on your screen. The sun did not just set, it's just me adjusting. I apologize. Um, so hit by a farm, talked about that, talked about the gratitude cow. Okay, time for projects. Um, Sorry, <laughs> I totally forgot to gather this one, but luckily it was right there anyway. So I showed you my homespun last week. Um, that was from green, ooh, what was it? Edgewood Garden. Where did I get green out of that? Anyway, it was Coriadale 4.3 ounces in her at the feeder colorway. I made a little hat for my husband for his birthday. This is the reason I don't wear ribby hats because I look like a farm thug. <laughs> I am a farm thug. But, um, <laughs> I totally would be a farm thug, no. Um, so he likes to have his hats short enough that he can wear those eerie things. So, and this was all the yard I had. So I have like this much left. <laughs> it worked out nicely. Um, so anyway, that was really fun to knit. I tell you, I'm into this knitting with the homespun thing. And look at my frizzy hair. That's so exciting for you. Sorry. Um, it is so fun to do with. The colors just change. And it's like, they all work together. And then there's like, oh, it's beauty and joy. And it's uneven, which I thought would freak me out when I knitted with it. I don't know. Pleasant. So that is my only finished object for the week. Oh, I have a spinning finish object. This, see, oh, look, it's purple. Guess what it used to be? White. I don't know if you recall, when I went to the Fiber Festival, I totally bought some Cormo, the second fiber festival, the fiber event. I bought some white, well, white-ish. It was kind of off-white, I guess. Cormo. Um, and it had lots of hay in it. Next time I'm going to get the fancy top, which did not have hay in it. But I didn't know. And they suckered me because it had lanolin and I wanted to touch it a lot. But I did dye it. And then I spun it into some yarns. It was very awesome sauce. I love it lotses. And let me just discuss, I totally dyed the roving. And when I was dyeing it, I was like, well, actually when it dried, I was like, oh, I don't know how I feel about that. It's not exactly what I had envisioned, but I'm so pleased with how it spun. Also, Cormo, if you have a chance to put your hot little hands on some of it, please do so if you're a spinner, because it is so awesome. It's very Merino-y. Um, in fact, it is a result of a Merino and a, I think it's a Coriadale. Let me, I wrote it down. Yes, it's a Coriadale Ram and a Merino U. So it is super soft and very springy and lots of loads of goodness. I enjoyed it quite a lot. Um, and also it's kind of fun to read about like how the breed started. It was like started in the seventies. It's one of the first breeds that they used um, computer databases to track like the genetics of the, like in the breeding characteristics. So it's like the super intensely specific window of characteristics that the breed has to demonstrate. And one of them, I'm just going to geek out for a second on you real quick. One of them is that the entire fleece, like samples of the entire fleece have to be within two microns of one another. How cool is that? I mean, that's awesome. I don't know why that's awesome to me, but it is like, that has to be that consistent. I mean, I guess I shouldn't even be excited about that because that's kind of like demanding the unbruised fruit at the grocery store and they have to throw away all that fruit that is bruised because I want the unbruised fruit. So maybe I should be ashamed of that, but I was still excited about it. I can't help it. The Cormo lady was also very nice. She didn't seem to indicate that she threw away any of her sheep because their microns varied by more than two. So Hopefully it's an okay thing. Oh man, I'm having guilt all of a sudden. <laughs> Whatever, move past it. Um, but this was, let me just discuss. While it was very pleasant to spin, I jacked it up. <laughs> I spun it. Okay, so if you're not a spinner, I apologize. If you are a spinner, you'll feel my pain probably. Um, when you spin wool or whatever, you're supposed to let the singles, so like the individual plies, you're supposed to let those rest for 24 hours. Okay. I had read that, but when I read it, the context I read it in seemed to indicate that 
specifically beginners needed to do that. And I'm all like, oh, I don't think I'm too beginning anymore. Maybe I can just apply this thing right away. No, <laughs> that's not advice just for beginners. That's like laws of physics and stuff. Don't do it. <laughs> so I totally applied it. It was underplied and wonky. So then I had to reply it. Well, in the middle of plying it and then skating it, I tied it with two places. I'm all like getting all sassy with myself. Learn not to be sassy, people, sometimes. I mean, sometimes yes, sometimes no, but this was a no time. No sassy no. Um, so I totally skated it up and it's only 200 yards. And I was all like, because I kind of, again, I'm trying to practice the thicker rules. So it's only 200 yards. And I thought, oh, it's just, I'll just tie in two places. It'll be fine. This is the first time ever I have had a tie fall off the skein in the soak. I was down to one tie, which totally freaked me out. So then I laid it out and I thought I had resolved it all. Like I thought I had gotten it all lined up correctly. No, I dried it. I put it back on the skein winder because again, you have to unskein. You have to unskein it to resply it to run it through this wheel again to ply it a little tighter. Oh my god! <laughs> it was so awful. More than once, I thought I'm just gonna throw this away. It's only four ounces. It was only ten dollars. I'm throwing it away. And I was like, No, I really like it. It's my like one of my first times dying and it's like, I really love the softness of the wool and it's the only time I had this full. <sighs> it totally has four knots in it where I was just like, ah! and I was like winding it off from both ends on the skein winder and it was like this and over here. Oh, it was, it was really bad. I totally almost made my, like my husband who can get kind of OCD -E about stuff. I mean, not really OCD, -E, just in that way that we love hyperbole in our culture, OCD. -E. But I was like, I'm going to have to have him do this because it's driving me crazy. Oh gosh, thank goodness. It was only 200 yards because if it had been 207, I might've burned down our house. It was bad. So anyway, now, but now I still love it. Yay! And it's purpley and greeny and festive. And it has lots of knots, but I'll deal with that when the time comes, okay? So, yay! So that's Cormo. And then, so that's finished, yes. Now, whippity doo -dah. Um, So that was the Cormo I bought at the Fiber Event. Now I'm going to show you some more stuff I bought at the Fiber Event. Um, <laughs> I bought this and I, there's no way the camera could possibly show you how much I love this stinking wool. Now, the wool itself, I mean, I'm torn because it's, what is it? Cormo, not Cormo, that was the Coopworth. It's Coopworth. It's a Romney border Leicester cross and it is much hairier like that. Uh, Cormo is very merino-y, like cowl perfect, fine. You could put it under your armpits and it would not give you a rash. Like it's just soft and beautiful and gorgeous. This is hairy, er, but I love it so hard. Oh, this is by uh, Hand Spun by Stefania. She's the one that does all the natural dyes. I really, I started spinning it on Mother's Day. I spun three ounces on Mother's Day. That was a little crazy, <laughs> but it couldn't stop. In fact, it was actually more than three ounces. It, I, I have eight ounces total. So this is all I have left to do, which is like two and a half ounces. I used to be a baker. I think I could scale that two and a half ounces. Um, by the way, it also has this wonderful smell, which I cannot describe to you in any way. I literally have no idea what this odor is. It's dyed with indigo and Osage. I don't know. Maybe that's what indigo and Osage smell like. Or maybe it's just something magical, like fairy urine that she washes. It in. <laughs> but it is, it smells so good too. It's this weird herbly. Oh, I don't know what. Oh, I can't stop talking about it. Even though I have no idea what I'm saying. That should be the title of my show. Anyway. So, oh, 
as I was spinning it, I was like, I had this moment where I was like, I have to order more of this right now because I must make a sweater with it. Okay. I really love it and I really love spinning it. And it is so amazing. I don't know how to explain it. It is the most lustrous wool ever. And it must be the combination. It does have some silk in it too. But it's also just the wool. Like I can see the little bits of silk and they do add luster. But the wool itself and somehow how the dye absorbed, it's like almost metallic. It's like pearlescent puff paint. I don't even know how to explain it. But again, it's completely 100% natural. I, it's, the world is amazing. Oh, it's amazing. I love it so much. So this is my first bobbin. So that's like four point, or yeah, because I had 8.3 ounces altogether. So it's like 4.15 ounces right there. Um, <clears throat> I was just so excited about it. I could have spun it much thinner, but I kind of didn't know what I was going to do with like eight ounces or something spun super thin. Because like that's a lot, but not enough. Like it's too much for like a shawl or anything like that, but it's not enough for a sweater for my giant self, unless it would be like a crop sweater, and it, then it would be like a summer sweater, and it's far too hairy for a summer sweater. Like I don't even think I could pretend that I could handle that. But so I'm just kind of doing it. It's you know, it's a comfortable thickness. It is so awesome. I can't even tell you how awesome it is. It's so fun to spin, by the way. I'm doing it like supported long draw and I'm just like, whoosh, whoosh, which is why I could spend three ounces in one day amongst, you know, living also and talking to other humans. But it's just like awesome sauce. I would think that somehow dyeing something naturally would just naturally make it cruddier. I mean, you know, I'm willing to accept that. I'll eat the bruised fruit at the grocery store. I'm down with it. But I, it didn't. It is so light and complete. Like, look at that. It is just floofily. And again, it is hairy. It's a longer staple. Not crazy long, but it's a longer staple. And, it, and you can see it. It's very wiry. It's very crimpy. It's not as wiry as um, the Masham. Or, it, it, or it's similar, I guess I would say. It's, it's all along the lines of a Masham. But, and I will say also that the Coopworth does vary according to the Fleece and Fiber Source book. The Coopworth does vary quite a bit in softness. Like there's a very, like while the, the Cormo has a very specific range, the Coopworth has a bigger one. So, I mean, it's kind of a shot in the dark, which you're going to get there. But I still enjoy it, even though it's hairy and I have to do the lint roller thing on my pant leg. Otherwise, I just look weird. Like I have a cat that only likes my right leg. Um, so I still have to do that every time I get up. But I still have to enjoy some. The Masham. Did I say the right thing earlier? I meant the Masham. I may have just made up a thing. I meant to compare it to the Masham. Um, like that was hairy, but it, it really wasn't. I mean, it was fine, but this is much more enjoyable to me for some reason. Maybe it's just the crazy, awesome, metallic goodness of it. I think that's probably what it is. Um, so I'm enjoying this much. I have no idea what it will be when it's what it is, but it'll be exciting to me. Um, further works in progress. Okay. This is my Emily sweater or Emily mm -hmm. um, by Ellen Berglund. I don't have one of those little dicky do things, but I did put a little, little marker where I was last week. So I've made good progress. I am content with that. I made it past the ribbing of death. Oh my God. The pat, I will it also confess the pattern called for three and a half inches. I think I only made it to 3.25 and the was just like, I can't do anymore. <laughs> now this ribbing on size one needles is going to make me kill myself. Um, so that's very exciting. Again, I am working that in the round. It is written as a, um, one piece, but flat. I have too many pearl stitches in my size to do that. But you can see the little, there's a lace panel on either side of the garter, of the garter, of the eventual steak. So that's very pleasant. It's like every, you know, because you're stocking it gets a little bit like, even if it's just knitting, um, it gets a little crazy. But that, just that little bit of, that little panel is enough to kind of help you. Okay, get to the next panel. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So I'm very pleased with that. I am almost through one skein. I have three more. Oh, 
Oh, so this is the other reason the ribbing was totally bumming me out. My little husband has size 13 feet. Oh, thank God he's skinny. And has skinny feet. Like, look at this. Hmm, see, look at all that ribbing. Hmm, so it keeps going. Oh, wait, there's still, oh, wait, there's still, oh, there's more. Oh, there's, oh, there's, still, okay. Really? Oh, I, what? Huh? That's the longest sock in the world. I mean, not really, but gosh, it feels like it. Um, this isn't in the Croy socks in there. Some sort of, it's called something camo. Like you care really, quite frankly. Um, yes. Camo colors. Um, <laughs> really? oh, why is there such a big feet? And I did him in ribbed because I was, I was going to try to surprise him for his birthday party. That did not happen. So I did it in rib because I didn't want to keep trying it on his foot. This is for time to knit him socks. So I thought that way, you know, give me a little extra stretch. So, I really, it's like the anaconda of socks. Check it out. Because I also, of course, he wears boots because that's what he wears. Like, literally, that's all he wears um, is work boots. So, I had to knit it boot length. Oh, my God. Dang it. Somebody posted on Plurk that her husband had, like, size 16 triple E. I was like, mm-mm. Those are the things you find out before you marry somebody, people. That's all I'm saying. I mean, don't marry him. I mean, obviously, she's like, I don't knit him socks, and he's okay with that. But, you know, if you are the person who has to knit socks for your husband or your significant other, you may just want to check their shoe size. <laughs> like, I would be a lot for somebody to knit for because I wear a size 11 in women's, but so much less than a size 13 in men's. Anyway, I keep going. I'm so totally rambling. Sorry. Um, the next work in progress is my Zuni shawl, which I almost finished. And then I had to just dial it back because it's so fun to knit. I was like, I need to stretch out the joy some more. Do you, do you do that sometimes? Like, I can't finish. It's like a book. You got to put it away for just a minute. Saber. Um, so I'm knitting this out of, I didn't even tell you my sweater is. It's the Beaver Slide Dry Goods in their two-ply sock in the colorway Blue Jay. I did tell you about the sock yarn because I got annoyed with myself that I had to look at the color. Um, but this is my Zuni shawl. Sometimes it's good if I show you the right side of things, but you know, whatever. Um, and this is out of my hand-spun loop bat stuff. So, so I, I know it's annoying that my, um, I don't have like a broader, like there's not more space for me to show you projects. But if I move too far back from the camera, <clears throat> A, it looks weird because it's just like my my head in like a giant field, which is kind of creepy. But, <laughs> and then also you can't hear me as well. And you know, I love to not talk like a normal human being. So you can see, I just have a wee bit, I think I have like two or three decreases left. I think I'm going to enjoy it. I really do enjoy it so much. Again, I had to literally make myself stop knitting it because I was like, oh, I can't be done yet. I don't like it too much. And like the the uh, very like geometric pattern is, I'm totally math geeking out on it. I'm enjoying it so much. I'm like, oh, I love it. Blah, 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 blah. It's just like Kubert's going to jump up my shawl. Oh, a little springy, but. Um, so yeah, that's really it. <sighs> Yeah, no, like, literally, that's it. I feel like I should have more to talk about. But there's literally nothing hiding. So that's it. Um, So, oh, that's one thing I want to talk about, really, just super quick. Because um, I was talking about my Zuni shawl and loop bat. And, like, I have one more. I only have one more. I've only bought two. I have one more that's, like, sitting up on my bookshelf in my kit, like, over there. Um, And I, I really want to spin it. But then I'm afraid if I spin it that I'll buy another one. <laughs> so I was like, no, don't spin that yet. Gotta spin everything else. Because I know as soon as I spin that, I'm gonna wanna buy another one, and I should not do that because my money tree is not alive in the big carrot. Um, so, but oh, it's up there. So, oh. anyway, it's beautiful. Oh, so that's the whole point, Durr, is that um, both Diane of the Knitables and the Knit Girls. Both went to Maryland Sheep and Wool this week and they talked about it on their podcast and they talked about just how exciting it was just to go and stand in the loop booth. That's really what I wanted to do. I was so envious. I mean, in a positive way, not in a not Ten Commandment-y 
way. Um, I don't know why I feel like I need to clarify that. Whatever. Um, I was so jealous though, because I was like, oh, I saw that she was going to be at the Maryland Shipping Wall, and there's no way I could have gone at all. Um, but I was just like, oh, that's all I want to do. I just want to stay in the loop bat bin. Loop bat bin? The loop bat, loop bullseye bump, bump, bitty bat, loop, loop. <laughs> Just gonna stand there and the, oh. So it's probably best for stuff that I was not allowed to go because I take up a little bit of space and I probably would have stood there for a while. So I don't know why I felt like I need to tell you that, but I was so excited about it. I was so I'm sure wouldn't you be so excited? So so um upcoming events this week. My husband is, um, his birthday is actually Thursday, like his actual birthday, birthday, birthday. And we're going to go to Mammoth Cave, which is very exciting. <gasps> so we're going to geek out on some geology stuff. That'll be awesome sauce. Then we're going camping in like a week and a half. Then my bestie, bestie, bestie from high school is coming to visit. <gasps> oh, <he's winning. sighs> I'm so excited. She's coming that, oh my gosh, there's so much going on. I'm so excited. And then right before she comes to visit, after okay, camping one weekend, the next weekend is preparation for the best to come visit. And also there's a little fiber festival down in, um, it used to be called the Hoosier Hills Fiber Arts Festival, but I think it's changed its name or something. Anyway, it's in Johnson County, which is like the county south of me. And I'm totally going to that, even though I'll have like a dollar. I may have to sell blood. <laughs> but that's okay. So, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to go out. But, oh. <gasps> Anyway, I hope everybody had a fabulous Mother's Day, and I hope everybody has a fabulous week. I just want to say thank you, thank you ever, ever, ever so much for your, all of your contributions, whether it be by donating, by participating in the forums, by leaving an iTunes review. There's a lot of them! I don't check compulsively, no, 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 but there are definitely over 90. <sighs> Thank you so much. And I enjoy reading them very, very much. Perhaps a little bit too much because I'm slightly narcissistic. But anyway, I just want to thank you so much for contributing in all of your many ways of contribution you land goodness. And um, yes, gratitude, Cal, in student Thursday. You have a couple weeks to finish up those projects. Post them out there so you can win a fabulous prize. And I will totally see you next week. Bye.